Hi there, my name is Aaron Clark. Uh, I am a former math teacher, uh, math high, sc high school teacher I taught for four years. Um, and then now I spent the last five, six years in the uh, corporate arena uh, working in the actuarial field. So uh, I'm putting this video together for my niece, uh, Tiara, who is probably the equivalent of a sophomore or junior in high school. She's been uh, kind of struggling a little bit with uh, a trigonometric uh, subjects, she's at her geometry subjects, she's been working on the area of regular polygons, uh, we just talked about some trigonometric ratios, so uh, this is kind of just to help her find the area of regular polygons and be able to uh, complete some of the work that she's doing in her math, math class. So I thought I'd put this video together just to help her. Uh, it's open for anyone else to take a look at. I'm going to throw this on YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or uh, some advice, uh, this is the first time I really put a video together uh, as far as teaching. So uh, please feel free to comment in the, on the YouTube channel. So following this will be the lesson. Also, uh, the question, basically what she's working on is trigonometry um, and looking at the trigonometric ratios and using those to find the area, excuse me, the area of a regular polygon. So before we go into looking at the area of the regular polygon, um, what I wanna do is review the trig trigonometric ratio. She had a question on that. So uh, the first thing is we have three trigonometric ratios. There are actually six. The other three are just, uh, it can can be found given these three. So these are kind of our three base ones. So if you look, and I apologize, this is about the best I'm going to get right now. Uh, we have the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, and the tangent at the top of that page there. Um, the sine, this this symbol right here, is called theta. It's a Greek uh, the Greek symbol theta, and it represents an unknown angle at this in this point. Could be known as well. It's just it just represents the angle uh, value, whether that be in degree or in radians. Um, and the level that I believe my niece Tierra is at right now is just for degrees. So the sine is actually just a ratio. It's just an operation telling you to do something. So what it's saying is take the angle theta and look at the side opposite and put it over the hypotenuse of the right triangle that it has that has an, uh, one of its angles being theta. So at the bottom, uh, right below, you can see I have a right triangle drawn. Here is my theta. So these opposite and hypotenuse and the adjacent is all about where the angle is. So you can see our right angles here and by definition a hypotenuse, let me try to get my direction here, right? Ooh, what am I doing here? There we go. By definition, the hypotenuse is the angle opposite the right triangle or right angle. So if this is my angle theta, this, the adjacent side is next to, adjacent means next to, this is the adjacent and this is the opposite. So the sine of theta would be whatever this value is over this value, the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine, it tells you to do something a little different. It's saying take the side adjacent that angle and put it over the hypotenuse. So again, it's all about where the angle is. So right here, here's our angle theta. The adjacent side is here and the hypotenuse is here. So you would take this value, whatever it is, over the hypotenuse and that's your cosine of that angle. And then our last trig value, is tangent and that is the opposite over the adjacent so again it's dependent on where the angle is so in this picture right here here is my theta you can see that okay here is my theta the tangent is you take the opposite over the adjacent right if I move over to this sorry I'm trying to get my bearings down if I move over to this triangle right my theta is actually up here it's in a different spot than it was over here so the opposite is now here and the adjacent is now here so it's all with 
with respect to what angle you're looking at when you do opposite or adjacent. It's not always associated with one side or the other. It's dependent on what where the angle is. And that was something I we talked about before that I wanted to drive home for, for my niece. So we could do some problems associated with that. My, my niece is a little bit further than that. We've done some problems, so she can review those. Um, but what I want to get into is how to find the area of regular polygons. So when I flip this over, I'm going to start with um, this regular, it's a hexagon. I know it doesn't maybe look like it's regular. It's the best I could do drawing it for right now. Um, but basically we're trying to find the area of it and it tells you we have one side of the hexagon. Now there's actually a, an equation that we have for the area of a regular polygon and that equation is down below here and it's the area is one half A times P, where A is what we call the apothem, and P is the perimeter. So I wanna quickly just prove that that's true, and I'm gonna use this regular hexagon to make, make my point. So here's what I'm gonna do. I put the center point here. What I'm gonna do is actually draw from, this is the center of the regular hexagon. I'm gonna draw a perpendicular from that center to one of the sides. Okay, so that's what we call the apothem. Um, in, there's a definition for that, but basically what it is is it's the seg it's a segment or it's the line that the line segment that extends from the center of a polygon to the the midpoint of one of the sides, which it's perpendicular. So basically, the way we're, what we're going to do is split this regular polygon into a bunch of triangles to find the area, because we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Okay, we've already been past that. So Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to draw a line from the center to one of the vertices. And actually, I'm going to draw two lines so we actually form an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we have here is an isosceles triangle within this regular hexagon, and what you're going to what you can see, and we could prove it. Um, but I, I believe we're at a point where we can we can just assume that this is true is that this is actually there There's going to be six of these triangles since a, sec, a hexagon has six sides, right? We're going to go one two three four five six So we could have six of these so basically if I find the area of this triangle and multiply it by six I can find the area of the hexagon So here's what we need to do. We need to find the area of this triangle. Well, we know this bottom side, which if this is six, they're all equal. That's what a regular hex hexagon means, right? That side is six. Well, this um, apothem comes down to the midpoint of the side. So I have a piece that's three here. Right, which does that matter? Not necessarily, but I want to illustrate something that we have here. So the next thing that we need to do is find the find an angle, right? We need to know we don't know how to how to find this apothem yet. If we knew this angle, we could use one of our trig ratios to find find out what that is. So this angle right here, well, I have a hexagon, right? And if I actually look at the center here, I know it's 360 degrees all the way around, right? So if I divide, I remember we said there were six triangles. If I divide 360 by six, that'll give me what this, this full angle is right here. Well, 360 divided by six is 60 degrees, right? So this angle right here is 60 degrees, which means now half of it, that's what happens when you drop a perpendicular from an isosceles triangle. It makes two congruent triangles. So this is 30 degrees. So now 
we have one of the angles, and I think you can see that. We have one of the angles, and we have one of the sides of a right triangle. Now we can use our trig ratios to figure those out. So this is actually one of our special ones, 30, 60, 90. So this side is three, side opposite the 30. The um, hypotenuse is gonna be twice that, which is six, which makes sense because this is actually making an equilateral triangle inside the hexagon. And then the apothem is actually gonna be three root three. And we could also find this, so let me show you. Uh, we could also find this value, and it might be an estimated value, which I don't necessarily want to do just yet. We could find it by taking the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to 3 over, we're going to call it A, the apothem. Right? Because the tangent of an angle is the side opposite the angle over the side adjacent the angle. And in this case, here's our 30 degrees, here's our side opposite, here's our side adjacent. So if you plug this, if you solve this, right, you're gonna multiply by A on both sides and divide by tangent 30. Right? And if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get something that's equivalent to 3 root 3. And that's something I'll let you do on your own. All right, so when we do that now, now we have our apothem. We have our area. We can find the area of this triangle, right? So the area of this triangle now, and I probably should have different colors. Maybe I'll do that next time, is 1 half 6 times the height, which is... 3 root 3, All right? And when I do that, multiply by a half, I end up getting the area is uh, 9 root 3. Okay? Now, if we look at our formula that we had in here, it's 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. Let me actually split that out for you. Um, sorry, let me, let me take a step back. This area right here, let me put my little symbol, is actually the area of that little right triangle, right? So I'm gonna actually, sorry, not the right triangle, the equilateral triangle. The equilateral triangle is nine root three, there's six of those, so the area of the uh, hexagon, if I can draw it, is equal to 6 times 9 root 3. Right? And that will give you your 54 root 3. Okay? Now, we can we can show that this area equals one half apothem times perimeter is a correct formula because if I split this out, here's what I did. I had six triangles, right? I multiplied it by the side, which was our six. Let me do this. apologize for the scribbles, but this is the first one I've done, so I think I think that's fine. All right, so it's six times one half. So basically I just took this equation for my triangle, multiplied it by six, and that's the equation. So look at what we have, All right? If I move things around, Right? I just switched the order of the multiplication. I just moved the one half in the front. Six times six is, is gonna be six. So there's six sides and the side is six. So that is our perimeter, right? 
three root three is our um, is our apothem. And then we have a half, and sorry, I wrote through that A. We have a half, so it's one half perimeter times area. Okay? So let's do that real quick. Let's do that a little quicker with the octagon. So in this case, the octagon is has a perimeter of 80. So this formula, one half perimeter times apothem, we actually have a piece of it already. So what I'm gonna do is I have to figure out what the apothem is. And the way I do that is basically the same way I did it over here, is I'm gonna draw the apothem down, I'm gonna draw a line from the center to a vertex, and I wanna find what the angle is, and that'll help me find the apothem. So, All right, so I drew the apothem, which let me throw my right angle there. I drew my apothem, I drew a like radii, we call a radii of the octagon. So if the perimeter is 80, one of the sides has to be what? Well, there's eight sides, so each side has to be 10. If each side is 10, then the uh, one little piece of that little tri that right triangle is going to be five. Right? So now I need to figure out what my, well, I need to figure out one of the angles because I have one of the pieces. So one of the angles, if I draw, actually, let's go up top here. And if I'm looking at that angle, that'll be the same as double. Okay, sorry, I'm continuing, I had a phone call. Um, so where we were, we were basically talking about a regular octagon, uh, it has a perimeter of 80, degree, or of 80. Uh, each side would be 10, because there's eight sides, and they're all equal. Um, and then I drew an apothem, the apothem splits it into two pieces, so the triangle that we have here, uh, it has a little piece here, which is five, and we were trying to find our angle in order to figure out what this angle is so we could find our apothem. So basically what we have is we have 360 degrees and there are eight small isosceles triangles in here that are all congruent. So if I find, if I just divide 360 by eight, that will give me what this angle is and then I cut it in half and that'll be the angle of this right triangle. So. Um, Let's do that. So 360 degrees divided by eight, uh, which I believe is, let me double check here. Um, I believe it's 54 or 40, sorry, it's 45, right? Is that right? 360 divided by eight. Yeah, so that's 45 degrees, that makes sense, because the other one were divided by six, it was 60, so, sorry. So, 45 degrees, that's the angle up here at the top. If I divide that by two, 45 divided by two is gonna be, uh, what, 22 and a half? So, that angle right there is 22 and a half degrees. And now I can set up my trig ratio in order to find the apothem. And here we go. So we're gonna use, we're gonna use tangent because right now what we have is here's our angle, 22.5. Here is the side opposite, which is five. Here's the side adjacent, which is the apothem that we don't know yet. So let's set up our equation. So very similar to what we did before. And again, don't just assume that what we're doing here is what you do for every single one. There are cases where they may give you the apothem and you need to find the side. They may give you the, uh, the, the segment from the center to the vertex. 
And again, you're going to have to find the apothem and you're going to find the side. So I'm using tangent in this case because it's the most appropriate one. So make sure you use your brain and think, think about what is unknown, what is given, and then look at your ratios and seeing, see which one applies with the angle that you have or that you have found. Okay. I know that's not completely telling you exactly what to do, but what you need to, to do is think about what is given, what's unknown, or what you can find, and then use the appropriate one. The method that I'm using right here isn't necessarily always, you know, it, maybe it's not the fastest, um, but it's the one that makes the most sense, I believe, for students right now. Um, so let's go ahead and try to solve the 20, I mean, we did it over here, right? So we can do it over here. So I'm gonna multiply by a, divide by 20, tangent of 22.5. So you can see a equals five over tangent 22.5 degrees. I'm gonna plug that into my calculator um, which in this case right now is my phone. Um, I don't suggest you using your phone, but I'm doing this just to uh, help out my niece. So you've taken five divided by the tangent of 22.5 uh, degrees. And when you <clears throat> put that in the calculator, Uh, you should get something in the order of 12.007 with some other decimals on it. Zero seven seven, and then you're gonna get when you multiply 12.0. Hold on, 0.5 times 12, 0.077 times 80, you get approximately 483.8. Um, you want to check with the teacher or whoever's grading your uh, work and see what units they want. Sorry, that's not completely clear. Um, whatever units or whatever they wanted you to round to, maybe three or four decimals, maybe no decimals, um, but the units are always something squared. So if it's if the perimeter was given in uh, 80 inches, this answer would be 80 inches squared, or uh, sorry, it would be 483.08 inches squared. If it was in centimeters, it would be centimeters squared, etc. So I hope that helps. Um, any other further questions, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna put this on YouTube. So if anybody else needs any help, please be in contact. And as I'm helping my niece, I'll put more of these together. So thanks for listening. Talk to you later, bye.